what we've been doing is finding area between two curves. So what we're going to do is kind of look at that in the same shape. We have this line that was given to me, y equals x plus 1 from 0 to 5. And we were finding the area underneath this curve. And we did it by adding up a whole bunch of rectangles. And we said this rectangle had a thickness of dx. Well, what we're going to do now is we're going to rotate this around the x-axis. So this line is now going to be the outside edge. So it's going to come down in this area. And so that's my line that's been flipped around. And so essentially what you're going to get here are kind of the circular. And we're going to end it at 5. So the outside edge here is 5. So it's kind of this bigger cone without a top. So what we're going to do is, just like before, we're going to add up a whole bunch of different shapes. So let's go ahead and cut this. And if I was to pull this out, this little section here is going to be a rounded disk shape. So when I pull it out, I'm just going to place it over here so you can see it. So when I pull it out, it's going to come like so. And so this is my little section that I pulled out. And it's centered around this x-axis. And so this point right here in the center is the axis. And if I measure up here, that's r. So this is just what we call a disk. There is no hole in the center. If I was to place it on its flat bottom, it would be something like this. And so this center would be the R. So I've taken this vertical disk, and I've laid it down flat. And what we're going to do is we're going to chop this thing. Guess how many times we're going to chop it and add up all these disks. The disk has a volume. So to add up all these disks, I'm going to integrate. The volume of a disk, well, if it's sitting here, the base of this is a circle, pi r squared. That's the area of the circle. And it's got some thickness, which now is dx. Because of the way I orientate it from here, I laid it down on its flat base. So it's a small, very um, thin cylinder, if you will. So the volume of that's going to be pi. Pi is a number, so I can just take it out so I don't confuse it. I'm going to take the radius, pi r squared. I'm going to add it up with a thickness. Now that becomes volume. So in this particular case, I'm going to integrate. And I'm integrating these disks from a starting point of 0 to an ending point of 5. My pi is outside. And my radius, I can see my radius right here. My radius is changing depending on where I cut it. And it's changing based upon this line. So it's going to be x plus 1, depending on where x is. That will define how tall my radius is. And so it's pi r squared, and then I need this thickness or this height. Because it's cutting the x-axis, it is dx. So I don't really care if you integrate that or not. It's more about setting up the integral. So let's try another one. This is the square root of x minus 1. So this is 1. I'm going to take this to 9. And you might ask, how did you know that was 1? Well, if y is 0 and I'm looking for the x value, I can see that it is 1. I'm again rotate this around the x-axis. So what we had been doing earlier is we were cutting this section right here, and we were finding area. Well, as soon as I rotate this, you can see hopefully that it's going to come down here. It should be fairly symmetric. It's going to end at 9. It started at 1 because it was shifted over 1. So it somewhat looks like an end of a bullet. And what we're going to do is we're going to chop this thing. Notice it's kind of rounded here. And the center of this would be the x-axis, because that's what I'm rotating it around. So if I pull this little section off, and I'm just going to draw it connected here to the x-axis still. Let's go ahead and take a look at that one slice. comes around. It's got this little thickness to it. And from the center up to the outside edge there is called R. 
So we're going to take all of these little disks, and again, we're going to add them up. The thickness of the disk is dx. We're going to have infinitely many, so that then set up our integral when we were doing Riemann sum and adding up those rectangles. Remember, we had infinitely many, and that thickness was really going to headed towards zero. So these disks are going to go from one to nine. The area of the disk, again, if I was to set it down like this and think about it, it's just this really um, thin kind of cylinder kind of idea. This is a dx, because again, I turned it on its side. This is the radius, so I could turn it upright. And the radius is always from zero to the curve itself, which is the square root of x minus one. So I'm going to pull the pi out, because I'm finding volume, so it's pi r squared. R is the square root of x minus one. Don't forget you need to square that, that's area. And as soon as I multiply it by the thickness, I'm now having a dx. So you're gonna get some a few fo homework problems to try yourself. I'd like you to draw these and think about what it looks like when you rotate. I'm also going to include like a little animation. So if you're h struggling with this three-dimensional idea, of taking this and rotating it around that x-axis. And again, we're only right now using the x-axis. You can hopefully visualize it through this animation.